Hello there guys, it's me Unstable Voltage and today I'm going to be having a look at Grey Goo from Petroglyph Games. Now, Grey Goo is a real-time strategy and Petroglyph Games, if you've heard that name before, those are the guys responsible for Star Wars Empire at War, amongst others. And their pedigree actually goes deeper than that because Petroglyph was founded by a lot of the old uh, ex-Westwood Studios developers. And those are the guys responsible for things like Dune and the original Command and Conquer series, at least before Electronic Hearts got its sticky little fingers all over it and started meddling. So, Petroglyph Games have come forward and they have decided to make a new RTS game, but they've decided to make it in a slightly older style. Now, does that still work in today's market? Well, so far, I think it does. Going back to the old Command and Conquer games, and at the risk of giving away my age, I remember when the original Command and Conquer games came out, and I absolutely loved them. I played the entire series, put countless hours into those games, enjoyed every minute of them, and for me, that was the golden age of real-time strategy games. And in recent years, we haven't had much in the way of RTS, but there's been a few things. I mean, Supreme Commander was probably one of the last great RTS games. But then we started to move towards an era where we were seeing things like StarCraft and StarCraft 2. Now, although StarCraft and StarCraft 2 are both great real-time strategies, I had a lot of trouble getting to grips with those games, and that's mainly because the gameplay style of them changed. In those games, it's more about micromanagement of individual units and having fast reactions and the ability to be able to remember lots of hotkeys and control several things on the battlefield all at the same time. If you've got pretty slow reflexes, you're going to have a lot of trouble trying to do well in games like StarCraft. And that was the thing that actually put me off real-time strategy for a while, and one of the reasons why I moved over to something that was more um, turn-based. So, the idea of Grey Goo is that it goes back to a time when... the the games were more macro management over micro management. So instead of having to keep track of all your individual little units, you don't have to spend quite as much time on individual micro management. You can just band box entire armies and just go in and roll over your opponent. Still very, very fun, and that's something that I very much enjoy. So let's have a quick look and see what we've got. Firstly, I'm just going to quickly pop into the options just to show you what we've got in here. There are quite a few nice things in here. So um, the actual gameplay options, there's not an awful lot to see here. Obviously you can turn your tutorials on and off. You can uh, also select how health bars are displayed, which is quite a nice thing for games like this, whether you want them displayed all the time or only if they're damaged and only if they're selected. So you do have a few options in there. You can adjust all of the uh, scroll speeds for zooming and scrolling for the mouse and keyboard, which is really nice. Now meat and potatoes of it all obviously is the... Uh, sort of video settings in here. Do you have the option for V-Sync? You also have a window mode in there, which is really nice. If we go into the advanced settings, you can see there are quite a few options in here that we can adjust. We've got textures, shaders, particle rendering, um, heat distortion and depth of field. I mean, these are all personal preference things, whether or not you want to turn those on and off, as well as dynamic lighting. No setting in here for anti-aliasing, so it does use anti-aliasing. I'm not too sure what type it is, but if you have a specific card and you want to change your anti-aliasing to a different type, it might be something that you have to actually force in your uh, video card's control panel. The audio has a lot of very, very nice settings in here. You can adjust individual volume sliders for pretty much every individual aspect of audio in the game. And you also have the jukebox where you can actually decide which tracks get to be played. And um, for those of you who do remember the old Command & Conquer games, the soundtrack for Grey Goo is actually composed by uh, Frank Kaplacki, who is the composer of all the music from the original Command & Conquer games. He's got a huge uh, back catalogue of games and things that he's composed music for, and uh, it really does add a lot of atmosphere to the game so you can actually pick which tracks that uh, get played during the game and then if we just have a quick look in the hotkeys you can see fully rebindable key system for unit control camera control the actual game interface now this is something that's going to be very very important as we get into the game uh, the fact that it has this sort of qwerty or uh, qwerty key assignment very similar to what you would see in uh, a MOBA game like Dota or League of Legends, where it's just using the first sort of four or five keys on the keyboard. And that's used for pretty much all the production buildings and units. We'll get into that in the game. And then we've got grouping for 
creating control groups and camera groups and then we have uh, some individual player controls as well so an awful lot of keys that you can bind it might be worth having a look in here because you often find uh, little things that you can do that aren't necessarily mentioned in the tutorials so there's, there's a good amount of settings in there now options wise um, the graphics seem to run quite well. I have noticed a little bit of an issue with some of the cutscenes, which are mostly pre-rendered, uh, but it even goes as far as the menus, like this menu here where there's actually a, a sort of a cutscene going on in the background. I do notice from time to time they do become a little bit choppy. Now, I haven't noticed any performance issues in the game itself. It's literally just limited to the cutscenes. I know I'm not the only person who has experienced this, but I've also spoken to many people who haven't had the problem at all. So it's quite possible that it might be an optimization issue with certain configurations or certain video cards. It's also quite possible that it is just a driver issue. It may well be something that gets fixed uh, in the long run, but so far it hasn't actually affected the gameplay in any way or my enjoyment of the game. So the game does have a single player campaign and that is 15 missions that span over the three different factions that are in this game. Now the 15 missions is five missions for each of the factions and you have to play them all through in order. Now it does seem a little bit strange these days that you can have an RTS game that only has a 15 mission campaign, especially as that is over the three factions. We've seen games where you've sort of had 10 to 15 missions per faction, so that does seem a little bit short. But when you consider even on the sort of lower to medium difficulty of this game, each of these single player missions is going to take around about 20 to 45 minutes. So in total you're looking around about 7 to 8 hours of gameplay for the single player campaign, although you do have to play all of the missions in order. Now I'm not going to talk too much about the individual missions themselves because I don't really want to give away too much of the story for the game. Uh, but suffice to say that the missions are pretty much what you'd expect from most single player campaigns in an RTS game. It's usually go and destroy an enemy base or collect a certain amount of resources, build a certain building, uh, hold a certain position on the map. So it's pretty much what you'd expect to see from uh, the single player campaign. There are a few missions that do have a bit of annoying arbitrary time limit where you have to complete your objectives within a certain time or before a certain thing happens. That can make it a little bit uncomfortable for those people who like to just sit and turtle and build up a massive force before you go and attack your opponent. But so far I've not actually had any issues completing those, um, those missions. Even though the AI is actually uh, incredibly competent within this game. Now I can completely understand why they haven't gone for a massive single player campaign because like much like the original Command and Conquer games uh, there is a lot of animated cutscenes in between every mission that actually tell the story of the game. Uh, they're incredibly well done. In fact uh, some of the design work in this game is actually being done by Weta Workshops, the New Zealand based special effects company that worked on Lord of the Rings, The Hobbit and Avatar to name but a few. So their influence certainly does show throughout this game. Uh, the quality of animation including the faces because I think it's all mo capped is absolutely fantastic uh, and the voice acting is top notch as well. So I don't really want to show you any cutscenes because I don't really want to spoil the story for you but what I will do is I'll splice in one of the pre-mission um, briefings just so you can see the sort of quality that you're going to expect from the cutscenes and from the voice acting. Most of the settlements in the lowlands have been alerted. They are mobilizing their fighters and sending everyone else north to the keep. All stockpiles of refined catalyst are being transported to the aperture and all supplies loaded on the Suma as it prepares for launch. The Suma? We've only just proven that the aperture device will work. We've no idea where those keyholes will take us. The Suma could end up in the shadow of the Silent Ones. It may be our only option. Resources are en route to Rooksbend. We're getting reports of landings in the surrounding farmland. They need a base there. They have no other defences. So there you go. As you can see, the quality is absolutely very good and it does add a lot of atmosphere to the game. Now, there is a multiplayer mode. 
so you can actually play um, two to four players. You can also do two to four players in a skirmish, which is what I'm going to do here, because obviously for the purposes of the video, we don't want to do an online game. One of the downsides at the moment is the skirmish maps and the multiplayer maps. There are only eight maps available. Now, again, that seems like too few. However, the game is bundled with quite a robust map editor, so I can see that we'll probably be getting a lot of maps uh, via... Uh, possibly Steam Workshop, but we'll be getting a lot of maps submitted from the community, which will bolster this number. And I wouldn't be surprised in the slightest if the developer keeps adding uh, more maps as time goes on. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go into skirmish mode, and I'm just going to show off the three factions. It would be nice if I could show you absolutely every unit you can build, and absolutely every uh, building you can build, but it's just simply not practical. So we'll have a look at a few of the different maps, and we will go through and play um, with a couple of the factions for a little while. So we've got the settings on here. Uh, we can actually choose the type of victory condition. So standard would require us to destroy the HQ, all refineries and all production buildings. Annihilation is to destroy every single last unit and structure. Or we can just go for destroy the HQ is an automatic win. We're going to leave that on standard. Some free for all, we've got no teams. And epic units are available. Each of the three factions has an epic unit they can build at the end game. Uh, it takes a lot of time and resources to build, but once you get that unit... Um, it's not invincible, but it certainly makes it very, very easy for you to go and start ripping up your opponent's defences. So I'm going to go and pick a spot on the map where I'd like to start. In fact, I'm going to hit create match first. And then it'll ask me to pick a spot on the map where I want to start. Getting a little bit ahead of myself. And I can show you a few of the game's mechanics and a few of the units and how the game looks. So we're going to start down in the bottom left-hand corner. Uh, for this first one, I am going to be playing as the Goo. So you've got three different factions in the game, as mentioned. You've got the Humans... Uh, which should be quite obvious. You've got the Beta, who are an alien race, who you start off playing in the campaign. And then you've got the game's namesake, the Grey Goo, which is more of a giant mass of nanites than anything else. But I'm actually going to start with the Goo, because I actually think that the Goo is one of the easiest factions to get to grips with. But they're definitely one of the most different factions to play. Now, the... Faction play in Grey Goo is actually sort of asynchronous. So even though the three different factions do have very similar units or they have equivalent units, the way that they actually play differs from faction to faction. It's very hard to get the balance right in a game that has uh, asynchronous factions so that they're all nice and fair. Um, Command and Conquer Generals did it very well. Um, the uh, Allies and the uh, GLA... They all work sort of very differently, but it still worked together quite well. And it does in this game as well. Each faction has equivalent units, but the way that they actually construct those units and construct their buildings is very, very different. So here we are. This is the Grey Goo, this big sort of mass of nanites. Now, the AI is fairly on the ball in this game, even though it's on the easier difficulty level. So you don't have too much time to mess around. So the first thing I'm going to do is move my Grey Goo over this little resource node over here. Now, there's a button down next to the minimap, which I can toggle on and off, which will show where all of the resources are. And much like you expect in these RTS games, you have to gather resources. But the resources aren't shown up here for the goo like they are with the other factions. Our resources are actually shown on the mother goo here. This little yellow bar that is starting to creep around. Because mother goos can have various different sizes. This mother goo starts at size 1, which means it has half its health. And as it starts to gain resources from the resource outlet, it will start to grow in size. Now these resources do deplete over time. And once they're depleted, they will start to regenerate. But the good thing is once a mother goo has depleted a resource we can actually move off and find another one so we've got our units you start with like a basic little scout unit it was already we can see the ai has found me already he's already managed to scout me and find me out so i'm going to go off and chase him and just do a little bit of damage to him these are only sort of basic infantry units so they don't do a massive amount of damage you can see down in the bottom left hand corner here we have the display for our unit so we can see how much health we have we can see what type of unit we have we can also issue certain orders to the unit now this is the same you can do with any faction hold ground will mean the unit won't actually move even if the unit gets attacked it will stay on the spot that it is but it will fire back you can tell the unit to guard, which means if something comes near it, it will chase it off for a little while and it will attack that unit and then return to its guard post. 
You even have the option for patrol, which is fantastic because you can actually set a route for it to travel and then you can go ahead and hit patrol and the unit will just continue to move around and patrol that uh, that line backwards and forwards. So that's a nice little handy thing if you've got a limited number of units. And you can also use shift and you can click up various different... Um, queue up various different orders and the unit will go off and do all of those so as you can see our goo is actually starting to uh, to expand here now the good thing with the goo is they don't actually build buildings they don't have bases as such so as you can see now i've clicked on the mother goo i have these options that are all bound to the keys q w e r and t now the only ones that are highlighted is morph mother goo and for uh, form a small protein we're going to form the small protein so we can do that by just hitting q if I actually hit Q and not number one, which I did. So we now select this small protein. Now what we can see with this thing here is that will either give us four drovers, two striders, two radiants, or a tempest. Now, well, two tempest. Tempest is an anti-air unit. The radiant is a scout unit. The strider is a basic anti-armor unit. And the drovers are infantry units. So if I hit Q again... That will instantly become four of these anti-infantry units. So this is the way that the goo works. What we can also do here is we can hit E. And we can actually get ourselves a second mother goo. Now these goos all appear in these little circles along the bottom. If we go ahead and find another resource outlet, let's just turn the map on. There is one over here. So let's go ahead and send that second mother goo over there. We'll send a couple of units to guard it. I do want to produce a few more units as we go. So let's go ahead and make a, another small protein here. Now, one thing that Mother Goos can do, and this is something that's very unique to the Goo, and it's something that makes their play style different from the other races, as one of their units casually walks through my base again, is the Goo units can actually move over terrain that is otherwise impassable by the other factions. So, for example, if we have things like mountains the goo can basically just climb right over the top of it. So it's a very, very mobile faction, and it's designed to be very aggressive. It's designed for attacking. So let's go ahead and take this unit here, and we will hit W this time, and we will pop it into two of these striders. Now, one thing that you can do, which is really nice, if I just group these units together, let's bring them down off to the bottom of the map so I can show you something that I quite like. Now, the game doesn't have unit formations like you would have in something like Supreme Commander and Age of Empires, for example. But if I move this group of units, I'm just going to click up here towards the top of the map and we'll see them start to move off. Now, one thing that you will notice here... It's not so noticeable with these units because their movement speed is quite similar. Is the drovers actually move more quickly than the striders. So they get out in front. And if I was to move them more uh, uh, further distance, they would actually get further and further ahead. However, if I hold down the default key of C and then I tell them to move, the entire units or the entire group of units will all move at the speed of the slowest unit in the group. So it's a really good way of actually moving a massive army and keeping all of the units together. We can see we've got another guy coming in there but he shouldn't be too much of a problem now there is a unit limit it's basically 200 units for each um each player and those units also include your resource gathering units which again doesn't really apply to the goo because they don't have a resource gathering unit as such apart from the goo itself i mean what we've we got we've got our um We've got four units here, we've got another three units there, so we've got seven, and then the two goos is nine, and that's our population cap, that's the nine there. This goo's become very, very large. We could spawn off another mother goo. What we're going to do here is we're going to make a large protein, and this means we can build a few more things here. We've got our dwellers, which is basically a stealth mine unit, the destructor, which is our tank, the crescent, which is our artillery unit, and we can also form a bastion, um, which is basically a sort of a, a wall unit. But what we're going to do, we're going to make a couple of the tank units here. So we've got some of our heavier units. Now one thing you also have is this ability to research tech upgrades. Now tech upgrades are split into various different categories. So you can only choose one thing from each category. If we look at this first category here, we can either give the Bastion a uh, volley... Uh, volatility upgrade which means that um, after sustaining critical damage they rampage 
which means they periodically damage all nearby enemies and explode on death. Or we can give a goo splash upgrade, so destructive projectiles now also damage enemies around the target. Or we can give a contagious goo upgrade, meaning destructive projectiles now bounce to, two ne uh, to nearby enemies up to two times. So what we're going to do is we're going to choose one of those. It doesn't really matter which, but we can only have one out of each of the... Um, out of each of these sections and we've used up our research credit our other goo here is growing nicely we can do another research over here as you can see we've already got this research being worked on so we get to choose one of these other researches so maybe i want stealth sensors upgrade or maybe i want my radiance to actually gain stealth so let's go for radiance gaining stealth and at some point what we'll need to do is be able to build some radiance so let's form off another small protein and we will get that to morph into two radiants. Now, when that technology is completed, these guys will then gain some stealth. We could make ourselves another mother goo, or we could go and research another tech. So let's give an aerial defense updates uh, uh, up upgrade. So this will allow our um, radiants to become uh, anti-aircraft so once we get both of these uh, researches done these units will actually be anti-air and they will be stealth which will make them very very useful against the ai if it decides to start spamming any aircraft at me let's form another large protein here we can move this unit out i had to move the wrong unit because i just moved the mother goo so what we can do with this one is we can morph the Bastion. This is our sort of heavy wall unit, as it were. So this is basically a defensive unit. It's just to try and stop units coming through. We know we're getting a lot of attacks coming at us from the bottom here. Probably not going to get into too many fights, because I mainly just want to show you the mechanics of how these... Um, these units work but we will take these units down and we will go and see if we can find our enemy maybe we can get into a little bit of a fight i will keep spawning a couple of units back at base just to make sure that we are safe now i've i've played these games very much by actually clicking and selecting things but you can literally do it just by um hitting the uh the q w and e keys as you can see q gives me light units w gives me heavy units and e gives me tech upgrades so just by hitting those keys i can actually select what i want to upgrade currently we're using all of our research credits so there's not an awful lot else we can do some of these resource piles are actually um covered over with these sort of vent plugs that you can destroy by shooting at them a little bit they do take quite a bit to destroy uh, there's one of the enemy units there now, one thing that I can demonstrate here is this stuff on the map. This is brush, and this is quite similar to things like League of Legends. As you can see, when you go in the brush, you actually change colour. And that's because units inside the brush can see units outside the brush, but units outside the brush cannot see units inside the brush. So it does allow for some very, very good ambush opportunities. So we've discovered the beta. They've got quite a lot of units here. These are their very sort of basic units. They're light lightest armor units just go ahead and do a little bit of damage to them here where we can already losing quite a few units just want to slow them down a little bit really more than anything there's one of their extractors so the beta have a slightly different way of gaining their um their resources so they also have what you probably consider harvesters their resource gathering units let's try and get rid of this guy that might be coming in to help out so we didn't lose all of our units and there we go, we've now got our stealth upgrade for the um, for the Radiance, so they are now completely stealthed. Of course, it is possible that uh, your opponent can develop the technology to discover stealth, so you do have to be careful there. They do have a unit in our base that's attacking one of our goos. We're going to morph into a couple of striders, and we can go ahead and finish him off. So we can look at our research credits now, and as you can see, these are the things that we have already researched. Now, I decided to go for the... Um, stealth upgrade for the radiant but maybe i decide that i want my radiance to be able to detect stealth instead what i can actually do is i can cancel that research and then i can use another research credit if i have one can use another research credit to pick one of the other techs so you're not limited to just picking one of these techs because you can swap between them it just takes a little bit of time to do so so that's the gray goo that's how the goo works the goo is a very very aggressive um very interesting faction to play as 
Uh, they're very, very mobile. Now, the units do move slow, which is something that you will find in this game, but that is a very, very deliberate choice. And I'll get more into that when we have a look at our next faction. We're going to go now and take a look at the beta. So, here we are. This is the beta, and this faction is more what you'd be accustomed to in an RTS game. They actually have bases and everything is quite modular. They're a good balanced um, faction to play because they can be very aggressive. They can also be very defensive. First thing we're going to do is click on our headquarters because, like I said, we have bases. Slightly different interface because it's different for each faction. We're going to hit Q to bring up our structures. And the first thing we can build is a refinery, which, again, I can bring up by hitting Q. Now, in order to place a building, I have to be able to put a building next to the headquarters. As you can see, there are four connection points. I'm going to put it on the one closest to the resource, and then I'm going to put the uh, refinery extractor down over the top of the um, resource output. These sky cranes will come in and drop the buildings down. As you can see, we have a commando, which is our basic infantry unit. And because of the way resources are gathered is uh, different for the beta, you can see we actually have at the top here, we have 200 of 1,000, because there's a cap of 1,000 resources, which we can increase by building silos. And you can see how much resource we are gaining or losing per second. So what I'm going to do now, I've built my refinery, I am going to go and hit W and then Q, and that will allow me to build a factory. And that factory will allow me to build some basic units. As my commando tries to chase off the uh, human's sort of basic scout unit. He might get him. I think they move at about the same speed. Might just about manage it. The AI is very competent, as you'll notice. The first thing the AI does, it doesn't mess around. It sends its unit straight out to find where you are. There we go. And we've managed to finish him off. So we've almost built that factory there. We are still making a little bit of profit in terms of resources. But now we have this factory. We can click on the factory and this allows us to build more commandos or we can build stalkers. We can queue up, queue up to three units as well as the one we're building. So let's go ahead and get one commando building. We'll also queue up another commando and we will queue up a, another couple of stalkers. We can pause production at any time. If we want to save a little bit of money, we can also set rally points, which we can just do by right clicking, which will tell that factory where it's going to put any of the units it produces. Another very useful thing you can do is you can actually click the auto rebuild units option, then click a unit you wish to build. And that factory will continue to build that unit until you tell it to stop or until you run out of money. So we're taking a little bit of damage there. Let's go and just shoot that guy up. So the factory is quite slow, and what you'll notice is this factory only allows us to build two different types of units. It won't let us build our main tank unit, it won't let us build our um, scout unit, it won't let us build our anti-air, it won't let us build our artillery or our siege unit, um, it won't let us build our sort of defensive turrets. Um, so, or, or nor, nor will it let us build any of our air units, as they send in yet another unit to come and bother us. But I don't think he's going to get very far. So let's say I want to build the tank unit. If I hover over the tank unit, you can see there under the requirements, it requires the tank attachment. So what I need to do is go into structures, and then I have the option for these attachments. Here I can either build a tank attachment, an artillery attachment, an air attachment, or a stealth attachment. So I'm going to build the tank attachment. I'm going to connect it to the command center, to the headquarters, so that it's connected directly to the factory. And then once that is built, we will be able to build our tank unit. Now, the good thing with the beta is they can actually expand quite well. They can actually expand to anywhere where they have vision. So let's say I want to take one of my units up here, and maybe I want to make use of some of this resource that we have up to the top. So I'm going to move a unit up there just to give me a little bit of vision. We've almost finished that tank attachment there. And there it goes. So now that tank attachment is complete, if I actually go into my units list, I will see that I now have the option for my tank unit, and I can build that at this factory. So I've got a little bit of, bit of vision over here. What I can now do is go into my structures menu, and I can build a small hub. Later on, you can build medium and large hubs as you unlock more... Um, more technology, but I'm going to put my medium hub in over here. You can rotate these buildings around. I'm not going to put another one down, but if you hold down the mouse button, you can actually rotate them so you can choose which direction they face. Let's just go ahead and sell that one before it even starts. And just keep you there. Wait for that medium hub. Pretty certain I was trying to sell that. Yep, yeah, it did sell it. 
that's fine. And we'll be producing our tank unit. They are quite slow to build. So there isn't an awful lot else that we could build on here. We could build an air pad, but it does limit what we can do. So let's go ahead and go back into our structures menu. And this time around, we're actually going to build the... Um, We'll build the air attachment and put that on there, and I'll show you why in a moment. So we've now got our small hub over here. This will allow us to then go ahead and build a new refinery, which we can then use to gather this uh, this stuff over here. So that's what the good thing is about the beaters, is that they can actually expand quite well. Anywhere they have vision, they can actually go and drop down a hub and then build a forward outpost. We are going to need some more units here, so let's get some more of these units out. And then we can also actually look at our tech upgrades as well. So as you can see at the moment, we've only got a couple of tech upgrades we can do. Um, we've got the these up, uh, these tech upgrades here because we have the tank attachment. And these ones have just unlocked because we've just built the air attachment. So maybe I want my commandos the ability to shoot down air units. So let's go ahead and select that tech there. Also, maybe I want my ca commandos to explode when they're killed. Or maybe I want my Predator's uh, volley of four shots to be reduced to single fire shots. Let's go for exploding commandos. And the tech system works in pretty much the same way as it does with um, with the goo. Being attacked again by some units over there. So now we have a small hub. We're now able to build a medium hub. Medium hub will allow us to build even more structures. So let's go ahead and do that. And that will get dropped in quite nicely. You can see here above the mini-map that we it actually tells us which techs we are currently working on and how far we are through the process of researching those as well. All the same options for the units, even though the interface is slightly different. Of course, we now have the option to sell structures and repair structures because we're not playing as the goo and we do actually have a base that we can deal with. What I might do is go in and build a silo and just attach it to this small hub here, just in case we do go over our cap on resources. Got some more tanks coming out here. So, as I said, what I could do is I could cancel these, for example, and I could just click on Auto Rebuild, click on a unit, and then it will just keep building this one unit indefinitely. We don't really want it to do that. Let's get a couple more tanks coming out of there. Now, the Beta can't really build any defensive buildings. So, like I said, they can be defensive and they can be aggressive. They don't have the ability to build defensive buildings, but what they can actually do is they can build walls. And building a wall is as simple as choosing the start point, choosing the end point, and clicking where you want the wall to build. Now, you can also build walls in single sections as well. You can literally just put down a, a, sing, a single um, tower from a wall. Now that is where the defensive side of the beta comes into play. We've got this medium hub here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to build a large factory on that. I'm also going to build a hangar as well. Now you will see that you do struggle sometimes where you can fit things because of the size. I've actually blocked that a little bit because part of the wall is in the way. So I can't put the hangar there. But I can go ahead and I can sell some of these wall sections. And that should give me enough room to be able to fit the hangar in. Now when you've got these wall sections, you can actually upgrade parts of them into gates. It's free, but it allows you to put a gate in the wall. But what you can do on any of these towers, there are certain units that have this little icon here. It says can mount wall pillars. And if you actually tell one of these units to mount a wall pillar, it basically becomes a defensive structure. So not all of the beaters units can garrison these wall pillars, but quite a lot of them can. So if you want to build defensive structures, then that's the way to do it. You can't do it with these little guys, but certainly these larger tanks all can. So there we go. That's how you build their defensive structures. We've got our hangar. Now, even though we have a hangar, we can still only build our very basic aircraft. If I wanted to build my more advanced aircraft, what I would need to be able to do is build the air attachment and attach that to the same medium hub or the same hub as the hangar. So even though we've already got an air attachment attached to the headquarters, that air attachment is only really affecting our tech and what we can build at the factory because the air attachment does allow us to build our anti-air unit as well. As we're being attacked. Let's just lure him in a little bit. Make him get a bit closer. Didn't even need to really. So once we've gone ahead and built our air attachment over here. Then we'll be able to build our more advanced aircraft. Can't really build our sort of mega units. Until we get pretty much all of the buildings and all of the tech done. 
Maybe I should be telling this guy to rally a little bit closer to the base. So there we go. The air attachment's now complete. And if I go to the hangar, you can see that we can now build the warbirds. Uh, still can't build the Nimbus yet, our bomber unit, because we'd need to build an artillery attachment. So we can do that. We can build the artillery attachment. Again, connect it to the same hub. And then we'll be able to build our bombers here as well. So that's pretty much the way that the beta works. We have our large factory. The large factory actually allows us to build um, three units all at the same time. Again, we can't build our predator tanks here because we don't have a tank attachment connected to this hub. We do have a tank attachment here somewhere. There we go. But So that only allows us to build our tanks on this, uh, this factory. Now, if I've got no factory selected and I actually click on my light units, you can see that I, it tells me that I can build tanks. So if I click to build a tank, it'll build it at this, um, this pad here. And if I tell it to build a guardian, it will automatically build it at this factory here because this is the only factory that can build guardians. This is the only factory that can build predators. So it's quite smart and it knows which, uh, which factory to build things from. Uh, you can set control groups if you actually select a group of units and hit control and a number key. You can then reselect that unit by hitting the same number key. Or you can just double click and you'll actually focus on them. Pretty standard for RTS games, but it's a nice feature to have. But you can also set, uh, set buildings to control units as well. So I've just set this large factory to control group one. If I move off the screen and, well, stay on the screen. If I hit number one, it will automatically select that factory. Uh, even if I deselect it and I'm off the screen, hitting number one brings that factory up. Double hitting that number key will put that factory over there. Uh, you can also set control groups for cameras as well. Now, one thing I did mention before, as I said, the units in uh, Grego actually move quite slow compared to things like StarCraft, where a lot, of, a lot of the units are very fast. And the main reason for that is it's designed to be more strategic. It's less about being reactionary and more about planning ahead, making sure that you have a good composition of units, making sure that those units are in a strong position to be able to defend if they need to. We might need to go ahead and build uh, a couple of bombers here. Try and lure them back a little bit so that my uh, defences can do a bit more damage. Of course, we could build some artillery units. But I think that's enough to basically show you how the beta works. Like I said, they are a more traditional uh, RTS faction because they can build bases. They can expand quite well. They do have the ability to create some defensive units although or defensive structures, although they're made from units. But they're actually quite versatile, so they're a very interesting race to play. And they're the first race that you get to play in the single-player campaign. So just before we finish this video, let's go ahead and have a quick look at the third faction, which is the humans. Okay, so here is our third and final faction, the humans, and this faction is very good for people who like to play defensively, if you like to sit around and build up your army. So what we're going to do, the first thing, as you can see, the interface has changed a little bit. We've got our core, which is our headquarters. We're going to go ahead and build a structure. We're going to go and build a refinery again. We do have a limit to where we can place it, but you'll see we've got all of these additional little grid squares around our headquarters. We're going to place down our refinery, and again, like we do with the beta, we need to actually put down the extractor on top of the resource node. We have our trident, which is our very basic uh, sort of infantry unit. As you can see, our buildings actually get sort of dropped in uh, almost as if they're teleported in. Once we've built a refinery, that will then allow us to go in and build our factory. So we're going to build that on the opposite side of the headquarters there. So let's put the factory down. Now the thing that makes the... Uh, there's a couple of things that make the human faction a little bit different. They are quite similar to the beta, but they do have a few differences. So the main differences are, first of all, they can't expand by building hubs like the beta can. So you can't just go and build a... Um, a base just where you want. However, they do have the ability later on to build uh, teleporter technology that allows you to teleport units anywhere on the battlefield you have vision. So you don't have the ability to basically build anywhere you have vision, but you do have the ability to teleport units there later in the game. Now, in order to expand as the humans, what you are able to do is build these conduits. Now, they work a little bit like walls. You click where you want them to start. You click again where you want them to end. And these conduits basically supply power to all of the buildings within your base. Once you've got a completed conduit, you can then go in. You can choose one of your other um, things that you want to build. So let's say in this instance we want to build uh, an anti-heavy sentinel. Because the humans do actually have defensive structures. So we want to build an anti-heavy sentinel. And we can put that down there on the end of the, this conduit. And that's where it'll build. 
So we've got our factory here, and our factory allows us to build revolvers Actually. and allows us to build tridents. It's actually the revolver that's our basic um, uh, anti-armor unit, not the trident. They do start with a slightly... They're in a slightly different order for some reason. I don't know why. Uh, but we only have the option to build those units. If we want to build something a little bit more hefty, like the, um, the Gladius, for example, which is our tank unit, then just like with the other factions, we're going to need to build the tank attachment. And it has to be connected directly to the factory in order for it to work. So let's go ahead and connect it to this factory over here. As they try and send in that uh, unit again, as you can see, my uh, base defenses are actually doing a very good job there. Now, what you can do later on with the right tech upgrade, if I can actually find it. I can never remember which one it is. Um... But you can get a tech upgrade with these guys that actually allow you to move their buildings from uh, one node to another. So you can actually put them, uh, move them from one place to another, which is a very, very useful thing to be able to do. Oh, there we go. It's already there. Teleport this structure to a new location. So if I suddenly decide I want to put this um, turret a little bit further forwards, I can go into my structures. I can build a conduit and connect it to here. Build it out in this direction, for example. Let's wait for that to be completed. We have our tank attachment here, which now allows us to build our Gladius. So let's go ahead and build a couple of those. So we've got our new conduit. So what I can do is I can click on this um, anti-heavy sentinel. I can click teleport this structure to a new location. And then I can go ahead and click here, for example. And we can actually just move it from one point in the base to another. So we don't have the ability to expand with the humans quite as well as we do with the goo and the beta, but it is a very, very good way of defending your base because you can have a lot of base defences. You can very, very quickly move them to the front if you need them to defend from a certain area. And if you've got vulnerable buildings, you can teleport those buildings to the back out of the way so that they are a little bit more Unit defensive. As you can see, we have our mega unit there, which in this case is our elite, our elite unit, which in this case is the alpha, which requires a lot of things. It requires the tank, the artillery, the air, and the stealth attachment. A lot of things still needed. We could go ahead and do that, of course. We could go in and we could build ourselves the artillery attachment and attach that to that factory. We can also then attach the air attachment because we can connect it to the tank attachment. Tech upgrades again work in the same way. Each different subsection is unlocked by building a certain building. So this one, for example, requires the um, tank attachment. Then you've got the ones that require the uh, artillery attachment or the air attachment. So we can go ahead and choose which of the particular technologies that we want to have. So losing a little bit of resources, but we can still go ahead and make a few more vehicles just in case we get attacked. So we've almost finished the artillery attachment here. Artillery attachment complete. That artillery attachment now allows us to choose a tech upgrade for our artillery. Of course, it does cost resources to do so. We've also got the air attachment. So that's now going to allow us to build our... Um, Oh, the anti-air unit isn't going to work because it isn't connected directly to the factory. That's the, the problem that we have there. Uh, we also need a large factory in order to be able to build our elite unit. So we can go ahead and let's just get rid of that attachment there. So what we can do is we can go ahead and build a structure. And we can build a large factory. Unit ready. Large factory works pretty much the Unit same way production. that it does with the beta and allows Unit you to create three units at the same time. So we'll just go ahead and do that quickly. We could also go ahead and see what other structures that we can build in here. So we've got some more defensive structures. We could actually build this artillery sentinel, which is very, very good for um, some long-range bombardment of uh, enemy units. Can't really build any air, uh, any air units yet because we haven't built ourselves a air pad. And again, we've got the teleporter that we can build later. So the large factory is nearly completed. It would be nice if I could show you one of the uh, elite units before we end. But like I said, they do take an awfully long time to build. So we may not, uh, may not have time in order to do one of those. But the main idea with the humans, of course, is you just uh, use these conduits and build your base out so that you can put your, uh, your buildings and your defensive structures on them. 
As you can see, we're starting to get some uh, construction queue pauses because we don't have enough resources coming in currently at the moment to be able to uh, build all of these things. We're trying to build a large factory. We're trying to build an anti-artillery sentinel. We're also trying to build some more conduits. So it's all costing us quite a bit of resource. The most of these things should be finished quite quickly. Now, another good thing is you don't actually have to build resource gathering units. It, the refinery will automatically put out uh, the number of units it needs, depending on how far away the extractor is. So the large factory is now completed. The artillery unit is completed. What we could do now is we could go ahead and we could take our tank attachment and we could fit that onto there. And we could then go and take all of our um, other attachments so we could put our artillery attachment on there as well. And then, of course, as I said, this allows us to build three units at a time so we can get things out quite quickly. So that's the human. So as you can see, you've got three different factions that all play very differently. The GUI is very mobile, doesn't have any bases. They're very aggressive. They can move over terrain that um, the other factions can't move over. Uh, they do move a little bit more slowly, but they've got very, very good map control. And uh, the downside is they don't really have much in the way of defense. But however, they don't really need it because they can just sort of move away as they don't have a base to defend. Then you've got the beta. The beta are a good middle ground uh, faction because they can be defensive and they can be aggressive. They can't build defensive structures, but they can use their units um, garrisoned on walls to become a defensive structure. And they can also put down buildings anywhere where they have vision and then you've got the humans the humans are very much a more defensive race they can only build uh, a sort of a single base as it were because you don't have the option to build another core or a headquarters so the humans can only build a single base but then they can use these condu conduits to spread their base out however they do have the ability to build a teleporter that will then allow them to basically teleport their units to anywhere on the map so it Get does make them uh, a bit of an interesting race so there's the uh, there's the three factions for you and Tank that is gray goo complete. so how would i summarize this game i wouldn't rec i wouldn't hesitate to recommend this game to anyone that loves rts if you love um, the original Command & Conquer games, if you prefer RTS games that require a little bit more thought and strategy and a little bit less lightning reflexes, I think that this will be a game that you will very much enjoy. The art style is fantastic, the sound design, the music, it's all absolutely brilliant. Haven't had any performance problems with the game at all, apart from, like I said, those little issues with the cutscenes. Um, the AI, for the most part, is very good. I mean, obviously, in, the, in these little examples that I've shown you, I haven't really gone much beyond... Um, you know, the just sort of starting uh, starting elements the for these skirmish matches. We haven't really got too far into it, but the uh, the AI will probe your defences. They will ambush you. They use very good um, sort of mixes of units, and they do really put you to the test. Um, but I would say, yeah, if you love the original Command & Conquer games or you love real-time strategy games that are that require a little bit more thought and a little bit less reactions, then you should definitely check this game out. It's currently available on Steam. Uh, I will put a link to the Steam store in the description below the video. So if you want to go ahead and look on the uh, the Steam store page, then you can uh, you can go ahead and do that and find out a little bit more about the game. Uh, there's also quite a few people doing uh, Let's Plays of this, so if you want to go and check any of those out, if you want to see a little bit more of the gameplay, I think a lot of the people doing Let's Plays are actually doing the campaign. So be prepared if if you want to go and watch those, you may have little bits of the uh, story spoilt. But if you do want to see a little bit more gameplay and uh, a little bit more how good the AI can be, you should probably go and check one or two of those out. But thanks a lot for watching, guys. Hope you have enjoyed this video. Hope you have enjoyed my first look at Grey Goo. And I'll see you on the next video. So until then, goodbye for now.